We're going to be testing a few valves today just to show you how we do our testing. We're going to start with the QR1 valve. Our automatic test fixtures simulate the function of the valve just as if it were actually mounted on a vehicle. After the valve is clamped down, if you check the gauges at the top of the fixture, the operator will input 130 psi supply pressure into the valve. 130 psi will also show on the delivery gauge. He checks for any leaks and then exhausts the valve, making sure that it exhausts completely. Here we're testing the New Way Delayed Response Leveling Valve. You'll see that as the operator lifts up on the valve arm, the gauge will rise after a 3 to 7 second delay. And the valve will exhaust and the valve gauge will fall after a 3 to 7 second delay when the valve arm is lowered. We test this valve in both the left hand and the right hand positions, as you'll see when he flips this valve over, just as if the valve was mounted on a vehicle. We do a second batch testing when they arrive at our warehouse before we'll allow anything to go into our inventories. There is no other independent supplier in the marketplace today that does this. We always test at least 10% of every production run that we receive. All testing is documented for safety. When testing, if we find over one half of 1% defects in a batch, we'll test another batch. If we still find over one half of 1% in that batch, we revert back to 100% testing of the entire production run. At Newstar, everything is about quality and testing. Here we're testing an air electric 12 volt solenoid valve. What he's doing now is mounting it in the fixture, applying 130 psi supply pressure, then connecting a 12 volt source to the lead wire to check the solenoid. When the solenoid wire is touched, full supply pressure will rise to 130 psi. When the lead wire is removed, it will exhaust. These valves are used in two-speed differential shift systems and can be used anywhere that you have an air and need it turned on and off by a simple 12 volt source. Seems he's having a problem with this one. There's a valve that's rejected by us. It somehow got passed by the manufacturer, but we caught it here. This valve would have gotten by some other suppliers, but it will never get to our inventory and it will never get to you. Here we're going to show you our cycle testing. We do life cycle testing on all valves. Here we're testing a D2 governor. We'll run this D2 governor according to SAE specifications, a minimum of 200,000 cycles. Each cycle consists of input pressure of 130 psi so that the governor will cut in at 115 psi and cut out at 125 psi. This cycle takes place in 4 seconds and runs 200,000 times or more and then we test the governor to make sure that it tests completely again. We then tear it down and check for wear. Here we're testing E6 type foot valves. This is a dual circuit valve and our automated fixture will test both circuits. This is what activates the foot valve, nothing more than a cylinder at the bottom. If we didn't have the automated fixtures to use, this would take us an enormous amount of time having to screw individual fittings and put hoses onto every port. We input 130 psi pressure to the supply ports and make sure there are no leaks through the exhaust at any pressure. Any leakage will show through a small hole above the valve which the technician can check with his finger. 
When the full pressure of 130 PSI is reduced to say 60 PSI, the tank must first exhaust the first top 70 PSI and then hold 60 pounds pressure in the valve with no leaks. Both circuits must work equally. These are just a few of the valves that we're testing today to show you how we test valves on production fixtures. Every type of valve that comes into New Star is tested. It doesn't matter if it's a Bendix style, Midland style, Sealco style, New Way style, Chelsea style, Fuller, Meritor, Delco, you get the point. From automatic slack adjusters to air compressors, everything goes through the batch testing program. Here we're going to show you how we check some of the production parts in our new air compressor program. You're looking at the crankcase block assembly for our S13394 Detroit NS750 unit. We're using a computerized CMM or coordinate measuring machine to physically measure points on the block like bolt holes, cylinder bore dimensions, case flange hub dimensions and flange bolt hold locations and sizes. All these measurements are fed into the computer and a print is then made. This print is then compared to our original prints for any variations. If everything is within tolerance, the shipment of finished castings is accepted. We run a batch test of at least 10% to 25% on all production runs of finished castings to be sure of uniform quality. The engineer will check for the flange dimensions, hub and bearing diameters, flange bolt hole dimensions, etc. All these dimensions are fed into the computer for comparisons to the OE dimensions. Without the benefit of this high-tech test equipment and fixtures and our skilled engineers and technicians, we wouldn't be able to produce the quality parts that we do. This piece of equipment is an optical comparator. All of our QC equipment is computerized and we're using it in this case to check the straightness of the connecting rods used in our NS750 air compressors. As you can see, we first check the journal end of the rod and then straight across to the piston end of it. Again, prints are made and compared to the OE prints for verification of tolerances. This goes on every time we receive a production run of finished castings, no matter who tested them before. We have to approve all parts here before releasing anything into production or inventory. That's SNS, that's Newstar. Here we are testing a manifold dash control valve. Tractor and trailer supply pressures are built up. Tractor supply pressure is activated first, then trailer supply pressure. The valve is tested for air leaks. The pressure is released, always checking for leaks. The process is then repeated. Pressure is released in the system. Trailer supply must release at approximately 40 PSI. Tractor supply must release at approximately 20 PSI. The test is completed and the valve is passed.